everyone, and welcome to the Richland One Story, which is the new Richland One podcast. I'm your host, Amber Mackey, the marketing coordinator for Richland One. I am so excited for this podcast journey, and I hope that you are too. I have today our 2023-2024 Teacher of the Year, Mr. Kavon Varger. Hello, Mr. Varger. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited for this podcast, and it's going to be amazing. I'm excited to be here. For those who don't know you and for those who, you know, never seen you or have heard of you, tell us a little bit about yourself and what makes Kavon Kavon. Who? That's a... That's a Heavy question. Okay. Um, I would say one thing that makes me me is I'm a very caring person. Um, I like to, you know, make sure those that are around me are, you know, good and taken care of. Um, that especially extends out to my kids um, and the students in my classroom and school. Um, I just want to make sure that they know that they are loved um, and cared for. Um, so that's probably one of the biggest things. Another is that I am a big kid sometimes. I love to have fun. I love to joke. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I do so well in an early childhood setting is because I can joke just with the kids. But we also, you know, we know when it's time to work. Um, but like I said, I love to have fun. So those are probably the two biggest things that make me me. You have to have fun with it, you Got know, to. with it, anything you do, you know. <laughs> um, so like I said, Mr. Barger is the new teacher of the year. When I say Mr. Barger has such a great relationship with his students, they literally (laughs) adore him. He is so good at what he does. I literally went to the classroom day and I'm like, this guy here, are you kidding? Please give him an award. And you did get one. And so tell us about how that experience was when they named you Teacher of the Year. Oh, man. Um, Surreal. So I remember earlier on in the year I had gotten a call, but I was in a meeting, so I missed it. Didn't recognize recognize the number, so I heard listen to my voicemail. I was like, "Hello, this is Craig Witherspoon." And I was like, I'm like "Oh my god! Like, <laughs> what, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Like, you know?" And then so he told me that I was a finalist, and that was kind of like it took me back. Um, it was very surprising. And then when we got to the actual ceremony at the end of the school year, um, I remember standing up there with the other four finalists. Um, and Caroline Carson, who's the teacher, teacher of the year last year, she was talking, and it kind of got to a point where I was like, "Okay, God, like, what's gonna happen?" And then she said my name, and it took a second for me to realize that she had said my name. Uh-huh. Um, so like I said, it was just very a surreal feeling, um, but I have enjoyed the ride. It has been such a big honor to have this position. So I called Mr. Barger our celebrity of the year. I literally, <laughs> him and Cheslin, who was our classified employee of the year, I call on them so many times, and they just say yes. So thank you so much, of Mr. Barger. Of course, Roger. I'm here I when really, you need me. I really appreciate that. So was teaching always something you wanted to do, or what was your journey to becoming a teacher? So I didn't start off wanting to be a teacher, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always known that I wanted to work with children. Um, so when I was in high school, I wanted to practice family law. Um, realized law school really wasn't my thing. So I thought <laughs> I would be a psychologist. I wanted to be a child psychologist. Also didn't quite work out there. Um, just a lot of schooling that I didn't want to necessarily have to do. Um, and then so when I was in undergrad, I actually started working at the preschool that we have on campus, uh, Bright Horizons at USC. Um, and I just kind of started recognizing like the direct impact that I could have on like children and their growth. Um, and so that's kind of where I sparked my love for education. Um, and that's kind of what drove me to become a teacher. I love that. I really do. Thank you. Now, was there a certain teacher that like you remember having an impact on you? Like, for example, I had this elementary school teacher <laughs> Miss Pascal, if you're looking at this on this end of this, I absolutely adore you. <laughs> Literally, she had these beanie babies hanging from her ceiling. <laughs> and it made me feel so safe and just so seen. And I just loved her very much. Was there that. anyone that you could think about that made oh, you? Oh, yeah. Um, the list is so long. I've had some great educators over the past years. Um, I mean, even going all the way back to kindergarten, Miss Bell, she was my kindergarten teacher. Um, she kind of like, you know, instilled in us a a big love for education. Mm -hmm. Um, I still actually am in touch with her to this day. I remember I picked my nephew up from school one day and she walked past and she was like, oh my goodness. Like, (laughs) so the fact that she still remembers me, um, it just kind of showed how much that she cared for, you know, not only me, but my other classmates. Um, My fourth grade drama teacher, Miss Witt, loved her, Mr. Mitchell. So it has just been a 
a long list of educators that have kind of touched me. So I love that. I really do. And I can tell just by your energy. First off, y'all can't feel it. We we have great energy. Energy unmatched. Unmatched. And I can just tell that your passion for teaching goes so deep. And I think that it's important that you, it's it's a calling. You can't just wake up one day and one do this. It has to be something that you're called to do. So I love that you touched on those people that really impacted you. Definitely. Now, as they say, every child learns different. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have to meet them where they are. Definitely. What strategies can you think about or that you, what strategies have you used to kind of um, help with that? So I really try to incorporate different styles of learning into the classroom. Um, we do a lot of hands-on mm-hmm. activities. Um, one thing that I've started doing over the last couple of years is incorporating music into my classroom. Um, just the That's kids. That's different. Yeah, the kids that I serve, they, you know, they're, they love music. Um, and so I tried to find different ways to bring that into the classroom. I know, for example, last year we were studying quadrilaterals. And we were watching this video on YouTube, um, just like a little song. And one of my kids goes, well, why can't we make our own song? And I was like, well, we can make our own song. (laughs) And so we ended up making like this whole rap about quadrilaterals. It's called the Quad Squad. Um, But they loved it. I mean, they, you know, came up with the rhymes and everything. And it was funny, like during one test, I could see one of them kind of like... And they were right, yeah, but they were like, you know, doing like I was like, kind of like, what are you doing? But I realized they were going over the rap to help them out with the test. Um, so yeah, music has probably been like one huge factor that has really helped out with my classroom. I love that. Can you give us a little bit of the quadrilateral song? Oh lord, <laughs> you're oh, like Jesus. no. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Um, my name is Square. I don't play fair. Uh oh. Got four right angles. Other quads just can't compare. Oh yeah. Oh. Where is my paper? I got an A on this test. (laughs) So yeah, they like I I said, they really like took you know ownership of the rhyme and the rap, and it was it was their project. So I absolutely love that. I'm gonna go home and start saying my name is. (laughs) Oh, I absolutely love that. Thank you. Now, on a serious note, we know. Every profession has its challenges, its ups and downs. What are some of the challenges that you have faced and how did you overcome them? I think one of the biggest challenges is the bounce back from COVID. Mm. Um, I Actually, the year we went virtual was my first year teaching. Um, so I was not only learning to become an educator, but learning to become an educator through a virtual aspect. So, you know, it was very hard to do that. Um, but even just the aftermath of COVID, you know, bringing kids back in, getting them adjusted socially and academically has been, you know, a challenge. And it's been a couple of years, but we're still seeing those, you know, effects from COVID. Um, so that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I face. But again, just trying to really incorporate technology into my classroom. I think that is one way to kind of gap the COVID learning and the post-COVID learning together. Um, that technology aspect has been a big help. So. Wow, yeah. I can only imagine. Um, And, you know, like you said, that's a transition in itself. Yeah. COVID for everybody was hard, and I can only imagine for our students how um, much of a challenge that was. But thank you. You overcame. (laughs) You overcame. And now, look, you're Teacher of the Year. Here we are. Here we are. (laughs) Um, So as we wrap up, what advice would you give a teacher or um, a young person that's looking to become a teacher, what advice would you give them about this profession? Um, I would say two things. First one is remember your why. Mm. Um, You know, that you're going to have those tough days, but as long as you remember why you joined the profession and, you know, why you chose this path, um, it'll help you kind of bring it back in. So like I said, just remembering the why that you're doing it, who you're trying to touch out to, what lives you're trying to change, um, and just kind of use it as motivation to keep pushing through. Um, The second one is that it's okay to not be okay. Um, and so when I say that, like I said, you're a first time teacher, you're not going to know everything right off the bat and that's okay. Um, but you can't be afraid to ask for help. There are people within your building, within your district that want to help you and want to succeed because if one person on the ship is sinking, then a lot of us are sinking. So you have that help. You just got to go look for it. 
I love so. that. <laughs> and I think that applies for every profession. Definitely. Remember your why. Yeah. Why did you want to join this profession? And really the why here are the students yep. and are the children. I think keeping that on the front, the forefront of our minds is really important. Definitely. Mr. Barger. Yes. Thank you so much <laughs> for being with us today. We're so thrilled that you came to join us. Well, thank you for having me. I've had a blast being here. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> that means a lot. Now, as we close, I want to ask our guests every time, like, you know, a loosen up question, of course, of like course. a fun question. So what TV show are you watching right now? Um, so there was one weekend I was on TikTok and <laughs> I was came across this video about a show called Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it is based off of like Disney fairy tales and everything. Um, but it Ooh. brought them into like our world. And so it kind of like combines the Disney fairy tales, but also like real world experiences. And it's just, it's very good. I'm on like season four right now. Oh, I love so that. I love it. Y'all should check it out. It's on Disney plus. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I have to try that out. I love Disney plus. Like I've started watching the proud family. Again. I love it <laughs> again. So yeah, definitely have Disney plus. I have too many subscriptions and I have a problem. <laughs> so I need help with that. Again, Mr. Barge, we want to thank you for joining us thank and we you. hope you enjoyed yourself. Of course I did. I, please invite me back anytime. Oh, anytime. Lily, don't <laughs> tell me that <laughs> because come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Well, that is the end of the first episode of the Rich and One story. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. If you would like to become a teacher and be a part of Richland One, visit our website at www.richlandone.org. And please be sure to follow us on all our social media accounts. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, we are Richland One.